Well, hey folks, this is the third lesson in my Cripple Creek for Clawhammer Beginner series. Today we're going to focus entirely on pull-offs and where they work in Cripple Creek. And after we go through all that, we'll integrate pull-offs with the slides we learned about in the second lesson so we keep building up towards a fully rendered version of Cripple Creek. And by the way, if you haven't watched the previous two videos, it might be to your advantage to go back and watch those before you dive into this one. Uh, the bare bones Cripple Creek that I introduced in that very first video is the foundation that we build on in every one of these videos where we add a new embellishment sequentially uh, video by video. So getting that bare bones Cripple Creek foundation down is, is pretty critically important to moving forward. Okay, let's dig in. Let's start by answering the question, what is a pull-off and how is it executed? We can draw some comparisons with slides in order to understand how we're going to use pull-offs. First, we're going to take the bum ditty and split that bum into two eighth notes so that we have a bum and ditty pattern. So we're going to go from a quarter note and two eighth notes to four eighth notes so that we have the bum and ditty, bum and ditty, or if you will, two beats and two off beats interspersed. So the beats are the bum and the dit played by the finger stroking down. The uh is sounded by the pull-off, it's the embellishment. And then the T of the ditty is played on the fifth string with the thumb. Secondly, the bum of the pull-off is going to be played on a fretted note, just like with slides. We don't start a pull-off on an open string. We have to start it on a fretted string. So let me demonstrate a, a pull-off for you. I'm going to use a, a pull-off on the third string here and just do it a couple times. And listen for that bum, uh, bum, uh. One more time. Let's break that down, okay? First, in this example, place your middle finger on the second fret of the third string. We could do it on a different string on a different fret. We're just going to pick this one and use it. So we have the fretted note now, second fret of the third string. We're going to execute a finger strike to play the bum. After the finger strike, then we pull off on the third string so that we sound the open note, which is a G. So again, it's going to be again, bum, ah. One more time, bum, ah. Okay, so a few tips here. Timing is absolutely key in this. You don't want to rush the pull. You don't want to delay the pull. You want to get those two evenly spaced eighth notes, the bum, ah. Uh. So strike and then pull. Don't strike pull or at the same time it's a strike pull. Also just like with the slide don't put too much pressure and too much tension into your fretting finger and uh, fretting hand. You want just enough pressure and tension to hold that string down to play the fretted note. If there's too much tension your fingers gonna tend to get stuck. Uh, you're not gonna pull off properly your timing will probably be off and the note probably won't have good tone to it. And then thirdly, when you pull off, you're not only pulling down, you're actually pulling away from the fretboard a little bit. Because if we pull straight down, you're going to bump the string below it. In this case, we'd end up bumping the second string and inadvertently sounding that note. So watch my hand again. My finger is going to come away from the fretboard slightly. So my finger's coming up a quarter and a half inch above the string after I pull off. It doesn't have to be a big motion. If you do it right and do it correctly, you can get plenty of sound out of that pull off. Okay, now let's create that four note bum ditty pattern. And what we're going to do is hit the fretted third string, pull off, and then we're going to play the open third string for the dit followed by the T on the fifth string. So it's going to be bum ditty by playing fretted, pull, open fifth. Here we go. One more time. Okay, so there's an example of a bum a ditty pattern played using a pull-off. And lastly, 
take that pattern that we just played and remove the pull off. And what are we left with is a bum ditty. And the bum ditty is played by hitting the fretted third string, finger up, then hitting and striking the open third string, followed by the offbeat note on the fifth string with the thumb. So. with the pull-off back in. The pull-off is just adding a note. It's filling in a space in the bum ditty pattern. We're not changing anything around there in particular. We're just, in this case, we just added in the uh to the bum ditty. Now let's put pull-offs into Cripple Creek. The question is, where can we put them? And the simple answer is, we look for any bum in any bum ditty that is a fretted note. And we don't have to look very far. If we start in the A part, the very first note, the very first bum on the very first bum ditty of the very first measure is a fretted note, fifth fret of the first string. It's a We could hit that fifth string at the fifth fret and pull off if we wanted to. But let's leave that one behind for now. We'll circle back to it later. The second place we could put a, a pull-off is in the second measure. Again, the very first bum is going to be formed on that C chord. We're going to be holding down the second string at the first fret, and we're going to play. And so we could pull off on that second string as well. But let's put that one aside as well and move on to the third measure. And that's where I want to focus for now. When we go to the third measure, this is what we have in the bare bones version. Remember that? Okay, so we're not fretting on the first bum of the bum ditty. We're, we're fretting on the second bum ditty. And it's fretted at the second fret of the third string. So let's put a pull off there. Here's bare bones. Here it is with a pull-off in it. Do it again. So that rhythm is bum ditty bum a ditty. Well, that bum a ditty should look and sound familiar. It's the example that I demonstrated just before talking about where we put the pull-offs in the Cripple Creek. We're holding down the second fret of the third string, striking it, pulling off and then playing a ditty on the open third string followed by the fifth string. It's that same bum a ditty pattern. What about the B part? Well, if you recall, the first and the third measures of the B part are exactly the same as that third measure in the A part. So what we just did in that third measure of the A part, we can do in the first and the third measures of the B part. Let me play the B part bare bones, and then I'll play it again, inserting those pulls into the first in the third measures. Okay, here it is with the pulls in it. one simple pull-off on the third string. We're able to insert it into the third measure of the A part, as well as into the first measure and the third measure of the B part. Now let's integrate pull-offs with slides. In the previous lesson, we learned that we could add slides to all three of those measures in which we just did pull-offs. So let's put that all together now. I'll start bare bones. Here's that third measure of the A part that we're going to repeat in the, the B part. <laughs> And here it is played with the slide. And then here it is played with the pull-off. So the slide's coming in on the bum of the first bum ditty. The pull-off's coming in 
on the bum of the second bum ditty. So we can fill up that measure with a slide ditty pull-off ditty, and it's going to come off like this. I'll do it again. Let me play through Cripple Creek with the A part and the B part, putting in slides as well as pull-offs, so you hear what that sounds like. So there we've integrated slides and pull-offs, and we're starting to get a pretty nicely rendered version of Cripple Creek. Let's take a look at where else we can put pull-offs into Cripple Creek. And I'll show you one that's pretty cool, and it's not so obvious. In fact, what we're going to have to do is do a note swap here in order to execute it. And that's going to happen on the second bum of the very first measure of the A part. And let me play you the normal A part, or I should say the bare bones A part. Well, of course, we could do a pull-off on that very first note at the fifth fret, but the second bum is an open note on the first string. So what the heck? That's not a place to put a pull-off because we're playing an open note. We need a fretted note. Well, here's what we do. We go to the second string in order to play that D note, which would be the open note on the first string. And we do that by fretting the second string at the third fret. It's the same note as the open first string. It's a D note. Rather than playing the bum on the open first string, play that bum on the third fret of the second string. And that sets us up to do a pull-off right after that. And so this is what's going to sound like. I'll do that again. It's really cool. And notice that I'm using my pinky and then my index finger uh, on the second string at the third fret. In fact, you could you could lay that down right out of the gate and have that ready to go. You could do And by the way, that second ditty after we do the pull off is the same as the bare bones version. It's just a first string fifth string ditty. Now let me play you the whole A part with that pull-off as well as the pull-off in the third measure. And I'll put the slide in it too. So now we have a pull-off on the second bum in the first measure, go to the third measure and we have a slide on the first bum and then a pull-off on the second bum of the third measure. Okay, let's go back to that fretted note at the fifth string for a second and then I said, you know, we'll go to the C chord, we hit second string fretted at the first fret and you can do a pull-off there. Well, I'm not going to demonstrate that for you. I'm going to let you play around with that. You experiment with that do pull-offs there and then continue on and see if you like how it works out. Report back in the comments. Tell me what you think. Rather than me walking through that, I think you know what to do now, so you go ahead and give that a try. But here's the light bulb moment I want you to take out of this, that oftentimes when you have a bum on an open string, you can go and play that note on the next string down at the appropriate fret, and then that sets you up to do a pull-off after the bum, to get a bum up. So this is a technique that you can look to apply in many different places. It may or may not be appropriate. It may or may not sound good, but at least you can try it and see what it sounds like. Well, let's wrap this up then. Quick review. We have at least two different pull-offs that we can insert into Cripple Creek and sound pretty good. The first one is on the third string at the second fret, and we can use that in 
the third measure of the A part on the second bum, and then we can also use it in the B part, in the first measure and the third measure, just like we did in the third measure of the A part. So that one particular pull-off works really well. And then we have that one little sneaky pull-off where rather than playing the open first string and the second bum of the first measure, we transfer that note down to the third fret of the second string so that we can execute a pull-off. And as I said before, uh, once you get these embellishments worked out and smoothed out and committed to muscle memory, then it's your choice whether to use them or not use them. It's not an all or nothing proposition. You can play through it bare bones, and the next time through you can put all these embellishments in. The next time through you can put some of them. It's your choice how you want to do it. And then thirdly, make sure to practice at a tempo where you can keep good timing and get clean notes. Don't worry about being fast. Speed can wait. Speed will come in time. Clean notes, good timing, good rhythm are way more important in the beginning than speed. And again, once you have the pulls worked out and put into muscle memory, and once you have the slides worked out and put into muscle memory, then go ahead and start integrating them and start fully embellishing uh, the Cripple Creek version that we're working on. Alrighty, and then next up, we're going to delve into adding brushes into Cripple Creek, so stay tuned for that. But until then, have fun and keep on picking.